Thank you very much, Paul. Uh, Mark, congratulations for doing that GPO work. Um, that is actually, there's been, I, I would not say opposition from the government printing office, but certainly stonewalling. And so the fact that CIC has gone forward with that, I think, is a real testament to what they're doing. Um, there's arisen a bright line between government and the rest of our country. It's a line, or you might call it a wall, or a ditch, or a moat, or an ocean. And it's a feeling that government is only relevant to those inside the beltway. Uh, the feeling is that government is only relevant to lobbyists from large entrance, uh, interests with offices on K Street, or only relevant to government bureaucrats, and that's somehow not a part of our country and not in touch with the rest of us. And I think that rhetoric is wrong. There's also a bright light that's arisen between the capabilities of our government and those of the pri private sector. It's a bright line that has led to a reliance on private contractors to do the real work of government, to an outsourcing of democracy to some spectacularly bad deals. Take the Government Accountability Office. They maintain a legislative history of every law. They packed those 50 million pages of paper and they sent them at government expense to the Thompson Corporation, which digitized them and turned them into a product. Thompson sent those valuable papers back to the government. Now, what did the government get for their consideration? They got a couple logins from a couple staffers, but even members of Congress must now pay to access this Thompson product. This is based on a perception that government can only spend money and it must rely on profiteers to do the real work of government. And that rhetoric is also wrong. Uh, the question I think that's before us today is whether government is relevant to a digital public library of America, whether the works of government are relevant to Americans, whether we can jump that wall, and whether we should jump that wall. Take the regulations that are promulgated by our executive branch, the edicts of government. This is the code of regulations. It's 170,000 pages of dense text. The regulations of our 50 states are another million pages or so. Now these are rules that are relevant to every person. These are the OSHA safety regulations that every business owner or every factory worker must obey. These are the hazmat storage and transport regulations. These are the product safety regulations for hearing aids and baby strollers and propane tanks and elevators. Are these edicts of government available to citizens to afford themselves? Are they available for publishers that wish to make them more readable? Are they available for the businesses that must obey them? Are they available to students that wish to learn? At the state level, Stanford University and the American Association of Law Libraries did a national inventory of legal materials. They found that the regulations of the 50 states are a paragon of unusability, an abomination of bad HTML, and <laughs> atrocious graphics. They found that 26 states assert copyright and prohibit reuse of their regulations. <laughs> At the federal level, the Federal Register, the official newspaper of government, is only available going back a few years Although kudos are absolutely due to Mr. Ferriero for the amazing transformation he's made in that publication since he took office. The Code of Federal Regulations, the codifications of our rules, is only available in very bad, unformatted text, or even worse, SGML, a technology that became old in the 1970s. <laughs> now, there is an XML version of the code that was created by Cornell with considerable cooperation from the government printing office. But those parties agreed that the XML would not be made available to any outside parties so Cornell could monetize their investment, making money on this valuable part of the public domain. The theory is government has no choice because why would anyone want to make government better unless they can make a profit? That rhetoric is also wrong. It hurts democracy and government should not condone this and I don't think the American people should. There's one more consideration. The CFR is 170,000 pages, but that's only the visible part. There are many tens of thousands of pages that are incorporated by reference. They're made part of the official law of the land, but only available by paying money to private parties. We're not talking about trivial amounts of money. A mandatory safety standard from Underwriters Laboratories costs $850 to purchase. 
a four-page document about how one must test for lead paint cost $64. The IEEE Dictionary of Electronic Terms costs $500, and that vocabulary forms the basis for many government procurement actions. Much of the CFR is hidden behind a cash register, and it's a poll tax on access to justice. You can't read our fuel and gas code, or our life safety fire code, or the firework safety standards, or the water hygiene guidelines without an American Express card. And I brought samples for you. I have spent about $30,000 on some of these privately produced standards. And by the way, they're produced by nonprofits, by 501c3 nonprofits. And many of them pay their CEOs a million dollars. Underwriters Labs pays $2.2 million to their CEO. And so if you want to make the law available and read it, you would need to spend $60 for the safety requirements for window cleaning. You'd have to spend $72 for the standard for disinfecting water mains. You'd have to spend $217 for the safety requirements for wheeled child conveyances from the British Standards Institute. The American National Standard for Power Operated Pedestrian Doors is $40. The performance requirement for hot water dispensers and household storage types is $45. The performance requirements for pressurized flushing devices known as flushometers for plumbing fixtures is $45. The um, American Petroleum Institute for the Welding of Pipeline and Related Facilities, and if you care about oil spills, you care about this, $125. By the way, these are shrink wrap. They have a license agreement that by tearing this cellophane, you agree you will not take this and do anything with it, include giving a copy to somebody else. Even giving this copy that you purchased, you give away your right of first sale. The standard for the disinfection of wells is $72. And my favorite, the standard for the construction and approval for the transportation of fireworks, novelties, and theatrical pyrotechnics, which you would think would matter a little bit on Independence Day, is $60. <laughs> These regulations are one small part of the information in our government storehouses. Genealogy, the law, economy, science, the arts, all this information is relevant to people in their day-to-day -day lives. This is useful information. It's vital to education. Just imagine if law students could see video of Lawrence Tribe arguing before the Supreme Court. If engineering students could not only read the technical safety standards, and these standards are not in the libraries because they cost too much, but what if they could read them and make them better? Government information is useful to people, but the reverse is true. People and institutions like a Digital Public Library of America can help government make information available to avoid bad partnerships, to find problems like privacy violations in documents. People can make government better because we are the government and an informed citizenry is not just a desirable attribute to a democracy, it's a prerequisite. John Adams made that point so eloquently when he said that if we believe that truth liberty, justice, and benevolence are the everlasting basis of law and government, then we must arm our citizens with knowledge. This right to bear knowledge is far more important than the Second Amendment. Government information shouldn't be a concealed carry privilege for the rich. The knowledge lobby should be more powerful than the gun lobby. John Adams, John Adams said that we must let the public disputations become researches into the grounds and nature and ends of government we must spread far and wide the ideas and sensations of freedom. He said we must let every sluice of knowledge be opened and set aflowing. That is our job as citizens. That's our government's job. That's our society's responsibility for democracy. And that, I put to you, is the opportunity for a digital public library of America. Thank you.